The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening and viewing friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. But let me tell you about Tom Whitmire as I've gotten to know him. I would say, you know, you've heard me say this before. He's a Swiss army knife. He does a lot of many things. And so um, when we talk about a doula, you think about a, a woman, but we're going to change all of that today. We're going to, that's why we had to dance today. Get your mind open to seeing something different and new because there's more to Tom Whitmire than meets the eye. Not only is he a certified doula, but he is also a lifestylist. I've got to read this because there's so much. A concierge health consultant, as like I said, a certified doula who specializes in fertility, prenatal, nutritional health. He also helps with natural birth. Now, he's the first one to admit that he's never assisted in a live, live birth, but there's more to birth than just delivering a child. There is so much to prepare the body for. And I thought this is fascinating because when I got pregnant, I wasn't thinking about toxins or, or not being my body, the terrain in my body, not being ready. But for those of you who are grandmothers today that want to help your children and expose them to something different and new so that they can have a better chance of having a successful delivery and a happier child. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am so grateful that Tom Whitmire, certified doula, is here <laughs> to do just that. Welcome, Tom. I'm so grateful that you are in the classroom. Aloha, Lillian. Thank Hi. you for having me so much. Uh, thank you for doing these amazing shows and putting on these amazing conferences and inspiring people um, with your words and wisdom and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny you're funny okay talk about how you dive in from 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 that and you're all in you become certified as a health coach a lifestylist um then now how is it that you became so passionate about fertility and and the reproductive system all right great question what i originally saw was that if I presented somebody something as simple as eat these fruits and eat these vegetables, they would always automatically have a response to me of why they couldn't possibly do that and how that's dangerous. Uh, you know, oh, I read this article, my doctor says not to. But the same people within the next five minutes, they're eating an Oreo and drinking a, an energy drink. And, and there's no, my doctor told me not to eat, you know, Doritos and Oreos and cupcakes and cake and to drink energy drinks and all this random product that's never been tested, but they've been ingrained in their mind, oh, don't eat this fruit, this vegetable. Even sprouts, if you tell a pregnant woman to eat wheatgrass, oh, I heard that wheatgrass contains E. coli and I can't eat wheatgrass. Well, wheatgrass doesn't, doesn't grow a coli, it's just that they want you to have something in your mind that, oh, well, the guy that cut the wheatgrass might not have washed his hands, so it could have this. And so there's all these like roadblocks. So I was entering all these roadblocks. Um, but the main reason I got into fertility is the roadblocks were a lot bigger when I was working with uh, elderly people who had, you know, complications that may have stemmed from, uh, let's just say, mercury amalgam fillings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a sec, I could work for them forever trying to explain to them that why they should have the mercury removed from the mouth. And this is the, the symptoms that they're having. Or I could work with mothers who are, you know, wanting to be fertile, wanting to, to, you know, give birth, and I can instruct them, hey, let's do a process where you never have to put the mercury into your child's mouth. And we mm -hmm. never have to do these cleanses and these detoxes, because the child will never have to, you know, consume all the stuff that we're trying to detox and cleanse from. And that's when I started, like, discovering my passion, what was your question, is the passion became, oh, these people are excited for information and they are taking it in for a sponge and they're not giving me the roadblocks like some of the other people that I've encountered in the world. Mm. But it's amazing how many mothers are out there drinking um, sodas and drinking wine and, and while they're pregnant, 
um, with their babies. And we know that they've done studies where the baby is attached to the umbilical cord yeah. and the baby's umbilical cord has 285 toxins in there. So is it difficult at times to get a mother to that's addicted to junk food and is not doesn't believe that nutrition makes a difference? That's not your clientele, is it? I, so when I first, like one of my thesis statements that I say is that what we're going to talk about, you know, as a couple, and I try to deal with couples, not just the mother, because the father is just as important, but we're, what we are going to talk about is what's best for the baby, not what's best for you or what makes you feel good or what makes you feel normal or what feeds your addiction. Like this is what I teach is what is optimal for the baby. Mm -hmm. And and I'm coming from an industry as a doula and, and many of the doula certifications, which is simply just another word for a birth coach. But in many of the doula certifications and how they're taught, they're taught to be an advocate for their client. Mm -hmm. And I was told, I was simply told, if your client decides they want to smoke, it's your role to say, these are the benefits of smoking while pregnant. These are the negative effects of smoking while pregnant. And I presented this information, now you can make a decision. I'm never in the world gonna work to that capacity. So that person that is not a client for me. So I consider that like, that's your junior high, you know, basketball coach or your junior high <laughs> piano coach is like, oh, we're all gonna get a trophy and we're all gonna be happy. And I'm just gonna help you come here and have fun. And in the end, you might, like I'm at the, you know, concert level, you know, Kennedy Center, London Symphony Orchestra, <laughs> the NBA championships of, listen, we have a nine month, you know, to get here. Practice starts today and we're going to practice perfect. So when we get to the game time situation of giving birth, or whatever it might be, and that push comes, you're going to have the best experience possible. Okay. So we're talking about the person who's already pregnant is coming to you, but we know, you and I know, that the majority of the people that walk around the planet are toxic. We're toxic, yeah. whether it's AMFs or food or metals or water or dehydrated, or maybe, you know, they're not getting enough rest. There's too much stress and they want to get pregnant and they, and yeah. they're maybe having some issues getting pregnant. What is your, what are some of your, what is your awareness that you bring to the table for someone who is now looking at, uh, maybe preparing their body because they have no other choice. They're not getting pregnant. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to answer the question. First, I'm going to start with a thesis sentence. So as everybody kind of knows where I'm coming from, Okay. my stance is that birth is a natural process that sometimes happens medically, not a medical process that sometimes happens naturally. So I'm all about natural, you know, conception, natural fertility, uh, natural birth, natural breastfeeding. And that's where I'm coming from. So if we're looking at what are the reasons couples can't get pregnant, so what is the cause of infertility? I'm just going to give it away. Uh, the main things is old birth control. So when people are taking these hormones to prevent you from getting pregnant, and then all of a sudden you want to flip a switch and get pregnant, and they're not detoxing the birth control from their bodies and these hormones, then those hormones are still affecting them from getting pregnant. And I've talked to handfuls of women that have gone to a fertility clinic and not once have they addressed or even asked them about their birth control or how long they've been off it or what, what brand they were on, what chemical was it and how we can get rid of it. Okay, so with that in mind, what is your how how would you say if somebody's on birth control, how much time should they be off of birth control before even contemplating getting pregnant? Cuz I never took birth control. I could not even handle birth control. Yeah. I don't know the exact answer to that. Okay. Which is probably the best answer I can get. What when I'm working with somebody, I would like them to do a, you know, 9 months before they try to conceive to get rid of that birth control, those hormones, the heavy metals, all the bad foods and everything that we need to get rid of. So that can be about a nine month process because nine months is a cycle that the body cycles on. That's why we also have a nine month pregnancy. 
So I'd like to do that in nine months. So I would say nine months with me on my program, that's how long I think it would take. If somebody's just off birth control, they're not detoxing or eating the right foods, I would have no idea how long that would take. I see your point. I see your, but we have some questions. She said, Vanessa says, I have two children expecting baby, babies both in June. Expecting babies both in June. Both moms have big issues still with morning sickness. Oh man, I had morning sickness, both pregnancies, um, both, uh, it was awful, awful. So what do you advise for people? Because the pharmaceutical industry will give them a drug that may cause their children not to develop. Yeah, I will answer that in general speaking. So not to her exact situation, okay. but the first thing that comes to, to my mind is what we can call burnt out adrenals. Um, and what's going to lead to that is coffee, caffeine, chocolates. Uh, we could also be looking at any sort of uh, eliminating dairy products, eggs. These are things that when the body has to continuously detox these out of the system, then it doesn't have time to work on the needs of the baby. And then you're gonna get toxins that are are backing up because it's not detoxing. Um, so those would be some of the things I would focus on. I would definitely focus first on if the mother's consuming any caffeine or chocolate or doing anything that's in extreme levels of stress to eliminate that. So I would say you would also wanna increase your amount of fruit that you're eating. So if you're getting headaches, uh, headaches, you know, that morning sickness is, you know, dehydration. So fruits are going to be very hydrating. Uh, you can do a nettle tea. I would say nettle tea is very good for pregnant women. There's no complications with that at all. So get like uh, traditional medicinals, um, something like that, a nettle tea, and then increase your fruit content. You, you can go with watermelons, mangoes, papayas are all excellent. And then what I also like to bring in for pregnant women is steamed uh, potatoes. So steamed uh, sweet potatoes, steamed red potatoes, steamed, uh, you know, Yukon gold potatoes. These are high in glycogen, which feeds the brain, nice. but that's what feeds the baby as well. So the baby's body is predominantly going to be built on glycogen, which is sugar from fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get your minerals and such from your nettle tea and your vitamins from your fruits. So if we, you know, started to bring in like and look at what the nutrition is, and then the morning sicknesses will tend to go away. Well, I wish you would have been around when I was pregnant. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Yeah. Nobody told me the 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 things I could eat and could not eat. It was, you know, back then it was like winging it. And I, I tell you what, um, it's been thirty, almost thirty three years since I the last time I was pregnant. My youngest is oh, going to be thirty three in April. And I will tell you that um, I remember I, I remember the day that the doctor went into my room and said, this was for my first pregnancy. Um, I just kept throwing up and throwing up and my ketone level was so high that my doctor said, you have no fat in your body. Now your body is going to start eating your baby because we need for you to eat. We need for you to eat. And I said, then bring a tray. And I would have it, and he brought me seven trays of food. They were all stacked up. And so I would eat, throw up. And he goes, eventually something's oh, going to stick. I would eat, throw up. I would eat and throw up. And so eventually something stuck. And, but, you know, you got to do whatever you got to do. And this is a small part of our life. But man, if I would have had somebody say, eat sweet potatoes or steamed potatoes, or because it helps with the brain and it helps with the baby, man, that's such invaluable information. What other information as a certified doula that's preparing people for that natural birth, because birth, like I thought when I was pregnant with my first, that breastfeeding was natural. Well, it was the furthest from natural because we had the nurses at the hospital trying to feed the baby with a bottle and uh, with glucose water. And I didn't know any better. I, I didn't know that it was painful to breastfeed. I didn't know any of that. And so uh, it would have been nice to have somebody say this to me prior to signing up for this. So what yeah. would you say to someone that is preparing their body to, to breastfeed? So when you work with me, it's a whole system. So I've had people that kind of get mad and they're like, oh, well, you need to do this at this point. 
And I said, well, if the clients work with me for nine months till they got pregnant, they've been working with me for the last nine months, they're not going to have this deficiency of this, you know, this, 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 and this. So they don't have to do all this, you know, weird stuff that's just trendy, but it's, it's not uh, optimal for the birth. Um, I would just say, you know, don't get stuck in that, um, you know, oh, well, I only have a little bit of this poison, so it's fine. Or my intuition says that I should eat this ice cream. Our intuition is hijacked by marketing and media and promotions and the televisions. There's boards that pay a random sitcom to make sure when that woman on the sitcom is pregnant that they show her eating giant hamburgers and saying, move, get that out of there. I want the tub of ice cream. The, you know, there's people programming. that- Programming, That's programming. They will- on every TV show, if somebody says, oh, I'm having natural birth, they will make fun of that person. And then in the end, they have that person say, oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is if we start where we're hydrating and, you know, drinking our nettle teas and our coconut waters and just clean, you know, not tap water. And then we work, you know, we're eating our fruits and our vegetables and we're eating stuff high and what builds a baby and we're avoiding you know, these rancid fats and oils and sugars and, you know, all the stuff that I could list. Then when we get to that situation, we're not feeling like, oh, I'm craving this and I'm craving that. My baby must need that or they won't be telling me this. You just stick on the same fruits, vegetables, you know, superfoods, whatever it may be with quality supplements and you go all the way through that process. Um, that's the that's the situation that gives you the most optimal birth. What we're really looking to do is at that moment of birth, we want the body to be relaxed and comfortable. We want that fight or flight to be used at birth. We don't want to use our fight, flight, or freeze the entire nine months leading up to pregnancy while we're taking all these poisons and doing high stressful things. Um, and consuming caffeine, and then your body's like got to detox that, and now it's stressed out. And then you get to the moment of birth, and you go to push, and you don't have that stored energy. It's like your battery is lowered. So I'm putting you in a process that's charging your battery, charging your battery. Not now you got fertile. Now we're charging your battery, charging your battery, and now we're at this moment of natural birth. Okay, let's talk about that natural birth <clears throat> because. <clears throat> Many women are so drugged with, with the uh, spinal block or so they don't feel anything from the waist down. They don't, they don't feel anything. They don't even feel the baby come out. Um, what advice? Cause uh, just recently a dear friend of mine, their daughter had a natural birth, didn't do any, um, any drugs at all throughout the whole process. I was amazed. There were, she had a doula come to her home a, a, a house, a, um, a um, house, no, not a housewife, midwife, a midwife. midwife yeah. And they had a pool. She gave birth to the baby in the pool. She didn't have any Pitocin or any drugs to accelerate or slow down the process. She had the baby natural. My heart just like, oh, I wish I would have been that kind of mother, but um, just the, the start of the process of her bringing that child into the world has been unbelievable. So what advice do you give to someone who decides to have a birth home, a, a birth at home or home birth? And uh, now what are some of the choices that they need to make so that they can make this dream a reality to have the baby without any chemicals, without any drugs naturally? So I would consider myself a prenatal doula. So I would be the first line that you would come with. And then I will help you, you know, choose a birth doula who's going to be in the delivery area with you that can rub your back, you know, bring you uh, a wet washcloth, they, you know, get you water, take care of you. That's what, you know, most people consider what a doula is, is a birth doula, as a person there. And then I can also help you, you know, choose your midwife. So somebody that I is skilled. In this world, we also had medwives where they're considered a midwife, but they're trained by the medical system. And they just been loosely, we call them medwives because they are whatever the hospital wants, they 
tell you and you think you've hired somebody that's your advocate to go down the mm -hmm. natural birth, <clears throat> and yeah. they're medwives. They just been brainwashed through a through the midwife system as opposed to the medical system to try to lead you and scare you into having a birth that has to have interventions and births with interventions are more profitable to the industry. So what I want to do is help you find a great birth to a, a great midwife and then a great you know pediatrician um, that you can go to as well once your child's born that when we all align together as a team and a, a great lactation consultant as well for breastfeeding. Yeah, the sec uh, second if, time around, I did that. I did uh, La Leche League. I, I, I was very aware of what was going to happen to my body the second time around. But it's nice to have. So I'm sure that you have hand selected a team of people that help support the the couple during this time. Yeah, and then when we all come together, then we're all in the room together. It doesn't. It's you can choose to have home with a water booth. You can choose to go to a birth center. You can even choose to use the hospital in some areas. That's the only situation. But if we all have a team and we've all been together for this whole nine months, then we all know what our plan is going in. And we're not going to get scared by tactics that are actual just straight up psychology that's being used against the mother so that they can add billing procedures on there or not get sued or have complications. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And the industry has really been hijacked. Um, I'll circle back to me just sitting in, you know, Phoenix, Arizona with a fractured clavicle. I've gone, I've looked at the Federal Reserve Board and the finances and how our money systems corrupt. And I've looked at all the wars and how we have fake wars uh, just to move money in and out of countries to line people's pockets. And I've looked at, you know, from crime to poverty to all these conspiracies that exist in the world. And at one point, I thought the only thing I can control is when I open my refrigerator, what foods and beverages I put in my body. So that's what I decided to be an expert in. And then all of a sudden, I had this, oh, my gosh, that doesn't do anything like I need to be an expert in birth and to make sure that these, you know, these kids are raised from the moment of birth, that first hour what happens to that baby in the first hour can determine what happens to that baby for its entire life. If somebody says I'm 40 years old, and I have Crohn's disease, you can say you weren't a natural birth and they'll go and look and be like, yeah, you're right. I was a C-section baby and you never got the microbiome that was established as you come through the birth canal. You weren't the proper hormones that your mom makes that you have, the hormones that you make. And so I will answer that question with saying what is the most important thing you can do in all this birth experience and if i left you with one thing it's that what i call the optimal hour once the baby comes out so the a beautiful scene that you kind of painted would be you know the midwife's in there the doula's in there and then soon as all the medical stuff is done and the father grabs that baby then everybody else in the room leaves the room the father's you know has his shirt off and he's skin the skin with the baby he looks at the baby, looks the baby in the eyes, and then presents the baby to the mother. And she's completely, you know, has her shirt off and the baby lays on the mother's chest. So what's happening in that moment is that pheromones are coming off of the baby's mm -hmm. head into the father's nose, into the mother's nose. The mom's looking the baby in the eye and the baby's looking the mom in the eye. And we have all these, you know, sensories. The five senses are all inactivated enacted and what's happening is the human body the mom's body says my baby is alive i can see in their eyes i can smell their head and i can hear their noise so the mom's body says the baby's alive the baby looks into the mom's eyes and sees okay my mom is alive she survived birth i can see her i can smell her i can hear her and i can touch her and i can sense her heart beating we're going to have this beautiful life together. And when we have that optimal birth and the father's there, then all this hormones and all the oxytocins of love comes into play. But when we have what's opposite, what I'll call a medical birth or an invasive birth or a technological birth, and the doctor takes the baby from the mom and the doctor is the first one to look the baby in the eyes and the doctor smells the baby and the baby sees the doctor's eyes, the doctor smell the doctor's pheromones, and then the second person is the nurse, and then all of a sudden that goes away. 
now we have a baby that doesn't know where it was born into the world and wow. who's thinking who's thinking my parents didn't survive this and now i have to turn in fight flight or freeze and i can't put out the hormones of love i have to put the hormones out of trying to survive in a world without parents and that's probably one of the number one things that I try to get to people. And we have a system that is designed to make sure that that love bond is broken in the first hour. And, wow. And, and if I just give you the smallest, like from the heart examples, putting a hat on the baby's head immediately, the baby is not cold. It doesn't need a hat. That hat is placed on the baby's head so that the baby smell doesn't go into the mother or the father. Instead, it has the smell of detergents or fabric softeners or dryer sheets, and it's keeping the pheromones from coming off the top of the head. Even wow. swaddling the baby, if they wrap a baby immediately in that blanket, we see it's the same blanket in every hospital because it needs to be done. Then we're preventing skin-to-skin -skin contact. The baby wants to be out. It wants to move. It wants to experience all its senses. It doesn't want to be tightened into a ball. And no matter how many people, oh, well, the baby was smashing the ball in the womb. That's how it feels comfortable. It wants to be out and alive. It wants to be chest to chest with the uh, mother and father. And we have a medical system that's immediately putting cream. I'm just going to use the word cream in the eyes of the baby. And that's immediately preventing that baby from making eye to eye contact with the baby's mother and father and making those signals established. Wow. wow so much that happens in that hour, that critical hour that has been circumvented and hijacked by the system. I hope that all of you who are listening to this right now, think of someone that you love, someone that's going to have a baby. Uh, this information is critical uh, for all of you um, to continue. Like we can just stop it right here. This is where we take 100% responsibility. Uh, you know, it, 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 my registered service mark is you can take a pill or you can take responsibility. It's not that I'm against the pill, but I am for doing everything you can. We've heard story after story from Tom and how changing to your lifestyle, your the way you eat can transform the way your life is going to be for for as long as you take that that final breath and if, if you're interested in learning more uh, go to when you need a friend.com while you're there please subscribe like and follow me on all social media and you know share this video with your friends let them know that there's more to birth than what we think. We tend to give away our trust. So if you are interested in learning more about Tom, um, all of Tom's information is in my blog that came out on Sunday. You just click on his name and it'll take you to tomwhitmire.com. Today we have Tom Whitmire. He is a certified doula, but again, he is much more than that. Um, for those of you who are not thinking about getting pregnant and you need someone to help you um, to manage your, your lifestyle, um, he is someone great. Um, let's go back to people that are having fertility issues. What okay. would you say are three things they can do to set their body to receive? Because you talked about birth control, um, how sometimes that, that helps. And I know that there are people who don't want to have a baby. So they take this birth control to not have a baby, but they still have that. I don't want to have a baby emotion. Um, what would you say would be other things that they can do um, other than changing their perception and welcoming a baby into their life? What would you say they can do as far as nutrition or um, dairy, wheat, wh whatever? I would, yeah. So if you're, if you're detoxing, I would keep detoxing. And what I kind of call uh, my own special thing is detox by don'ting. So it doesn't cost any money to don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, <laughs> don't do this, and all the stuff that's adding up. So don't do the coffee, don't do the caffeines, don't do the energy drinks, don't do the alcohol, all the stuff that the doctors will say, oh, well, I'm sh that's fine in moderation. The doctor is going to say that because they don't want you to find a new doctor. You'll People are addicts, will just find a doctor that approves of their addiction. And stressing out the adrenals to not lead to fertility is also uh, hot yoga is one that we're told is great, but if you're at 103 degrees every single day working out, that's stressing you out and that's not gonna be good for your, wow. for your fertility. And then the same way, cold water plunging 
and all this, you know, cold water hydrotherapy or chronic, uh, you know, hyperbaric chambers or, or the cryo chambers, not good for fertility. So anything that's creating high stress, if you go in a far infrared sauna, which, you know, we all kind of promote, don't go over that, you know, 20 minutes. Like in the past, I just put on a sitcom, they're 22 minutes long, and then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> You're not trying to go in there for 150 degrees and be a hero. Stop being a hero. I've had clients that uh, they were doing a fertility shot and they were going the next day to do all the in vitro and everything. And they did a NASCAR experience the day before. <laughs> so they went, they were adrenaline junkies and they went on this big adrenaline high and their body shot out is full of adrenaline. And when you have adrenaline you're in your body, it's that rapidly ages you and it's not creating an environment for fertility. Wow. And so you're saying that people that are athletes running marathons, running that stressing their body out, that maybe they should take a little vacation just to prepare the body to calm it down to, to receive that fertilized sperm and egg. I would say, yeah. So like if you're running short, so human beings are designed to do like short sprints and but long extended where okay, I no longer can run like this. And now I'm like totally collapsed and I'm just trying <laughs> to make it to the finish line so I can stay. That's not beneficial for you. Yeah. Yeah. And if well, we're in closing, I just like this expressing. Well, well, we're, 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 One of the most important things you can do and what I'm going to leave you with is the importance of breastfeeding your baby. In that optimal hour, the baby will latch. They will find the nipple and it will be comfortable and they'll get colostrum. And that's when they're getting all the, you know, the moms making everything that they need for that baby to establish their immune system for the rest of their lives. And the baby's immune system is the mother's milk. The mother from the spit, the spit will go into the nipple. The mom will create everything it needs to whatever that baby needs in that moment. And you breastfeed the immune system back into the baby. Uh, breast milk is about 96% sugar water. So it's built from fruits and vegetables. It's not it's not made of fats or proteins. So focus on fruits and vegetables. And I try to tell people, breastfeed your baby until their teeth fully come in. When the baby's teeth comes in, when the human being's teeth come in, then they switch over the enzymes of digesting food and not digesting milk. So that's a key. So at least a year, don't let your doctor or whomever talk you into at six months to get off. Oh, we want to bring the father and get him involved. So we're using a bottle. Um, it's not worth it. If you often meet who is the smartest person in the room, if you're at a party and the smartest person in the room, ask them, were you a natural birth and were you breastfed? And I bet you if they come back with an answer, they were breastfed and that they were a natural birth because it creates people that are bigger, better, stronger. And wow. you may have to sacrifice nine months for fertility, nine months of the pregnancy, and maybe those first nine months or you know, two years breastfeeding. But for the next 18 years of your life, it's going to be very simple for you. You can bring your baby to yoga and they can sit there next to you and everybody's done. You have a baby, my baby would cry. And you're like, well, my baby's optimal baby. I work with Tom. Like my baby doesn't, <laughs> my babies don't cry. They don't get rashes. They don't get ear infections. They don't have, oh, I got to take my, oh, I have this blood thing and, or any of that stuff. And it's from the natural birth and it's from the breastfeeding. And the last tip, if you do move into maybe just breastfeeding in the morning at night and you pump and do a bottle, you have to label those bottles. When you pump milk in the morning, it's designed for the baby in the morning. So a lot of people will pump morning milk and give it to a baby at night. It's got all the hormones for creating energy and going through the day. And you're giving that to the baby at night and wondering wow. what the baby wants to be. And then the same thing with milk at night. If you pump milk from the night, you got to label at night and give it to the baby later in the evening because that's got all the hormones and everything mom produced to put the baby to sleep. So if you're like, oh, my baby's chaotic, I don't know what's going on. It's because you haven't gone through the processes or had these little tips and tricks that uh, nobody wants to tell you about because they can't make money off you. They make money if your baby can't sleep. Then you go to the doctor and they give you a pill or tell you something. I'm telling you, these are the tips and tricks that I don't make any money off of. I just want you to know. And so that you're having the best uh, life ever. And once again, uh, I'll just give you the number. If you want to get a hold of Tom and have a conversation with Tom, you can go to tomwhitmore.com or you can call him 305-771-1414. That's 305-771-1414. 
1414. Tom, it's been great. I really have enjoyed this conversation. You really taught me a lot. I think that right now we're done having grandbabies. <laughs> um, that's what <laughs> I think we're done having grandbabies, but our grandbabies are old enough. Some of them are old enough that they're having children now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the cycle of life is always with us. And so um, whatever cycle we're in, whatever point in our life, we can use this information to help the next generation coming forward. And I am so grateful. I wish you would have been on my side when I was having babies, but I'm glad yeah. that you are here and that you're helping the next generation have the it. perfect births. Thank you so much. All right. Have a uh, sprout standing day. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Okay. Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.